think seeing uh, a plan that's out there, talking about it with folks, knowing that he's not going to do anything. He, you know, he talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest from the 30-foot ladder factory. That's not how you stop this. And I think seeing... Yeah. Yeah, that's the governor of Minnesota, who's also on Kamala Harris's short list. He says if Donald Trump wants to build a wall that's 25 feet tall, he's going to invest in 30 foot tall ladders. They really don't care about our borders, do they? They don't care about America. Welcome to Friday, Friday, Luya to you. It's Mike Opelka in for one more Friday. On the Chris Plant Show, as Chris is, I think he's on the the back nine, as they say, of his vacation. He will return next week. And until such time, we'll try and keep this thing on the rails in the middle of what is one of the craziest, craziest couple of weeks we've seen in a long time. And a crazy couple of days. And well, let's just get down to the last few hours. It's been downright nutty. But we did get some Americans back. We got some Americans being held by Vladimir Putin and Russia. They're back in America and they're being observed and checked out by doctors in San Antonio as we speak. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It was just before midnight last night. Joe Biden had to be awake. And I have to tell you, it looked like it was tough for him to be awake last night. This was a a photo op. This was a great moment for American citizens to see those who had been held basically as political prisoners, as hostages, were released. Yes, we gave we gave Putin a murderer. We handed Vladimir Putin, a guy who had been convicted of killing someone in broad daylight in Germany. So we had to make this crazy seven-nation deal for us to get our three Americans back. And there were pretty powerful images last night that were generated by the arrival of our Americans back on American soil, and they got to meet with their families. I was looking at I was watching the whole thing. I don't know if you were up late last night. Uh, There were a couple of moments that were bizarre. It was also very emotional. Can you imagine the feelings of the families when they saw their loved ones coming down that short flight of stairs? I would not have been able to wait for the photo op between the president and the vice president in each one of them because they did it one at a time. They didn't just open the doors to the plane and let them run out and rush to their families. No, they were released one at a time. And then they had their moment with the president, the vice president, the photo ops, the video ops. You're going to be seeing in campaign appearances going forward. And that's what politicians do. And then finally, they got to go to their families. And that's where the real emotion happened. That's where the real tears started coming down. And any family, any family that has a loved one who's being held Overseas, You know, we still have five Americans being held, reportedly still alive, in the custody of, um, of Hamas. And let's hope that gets resolved. But the question is, everybody asks, at what cost? What did we give up? What did we surrender? And uh, I, I know in the past we have talked about the fact that Donald Trump said he would never negotiate with people like this. He would never allow terrorists to use Americans as a bargaining chip. And that's why two of the three, by the way, two of the three that we returned were returned yesterday. They were uh, they were taken under Joe Biden. Under Joe Biden, Donald Trump got almost 60 people out. He didn't get one of the three yesterday out. He did. And and there's still another American, a teacher from the Philadelphia area, uh, a teacher from uh, Pennsylvania who is still remaining in Russian custody for the same crime that Brittany Griner committed, the WNBA player. And that gentleman and his family are hoping that he would get the same treatment that Brittany Griner got in terms of urgency, but he doesn't check enough boxes. 
he's not a member of the LGBT community and not a person of color, not somebody who plays in a women's basketball league. And Brittany Griner, who's currently representing the American female basketball team at the Olympics, was asked about it yesterday. She basically dodged it. But you would hope that the Fogel family gets the same kind of attention as Brittany Griner got. I believe he's been held in captivity longer than she has. He had a prescribed, a prescribed amount of marijuana. Illegal in Russia, yes, I get it. But it wasn't like he was taking it for uh, recreational purposes. So I'm glad our Americans are home. And as we anticipated yesterday, as we talked about it yesterday, it was going to be used for uh, photo ops, for campaign pictures, and, and that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. But there were moments uh, yesterday before the folks got here when Joe Biden talked about it. There were uh, moments at the at the microphone where our president seemed to once again want to make this about himself. And having lost family, not a different way, and not knowing what's happening, the circumstance from their accident, help it. Uh, it matters, Mr. President. What- He really didn't answer any questions, but he did say, you know, having lost family uh, in a different way. Nobody died in this situation, Mr. President. We managed to get some people home because we finally gave up enough of our bargaining chips to get Vladimir Putin to move. Now, Putin wanted that murderer home. And so Joe, Joe Biden had to convince the German leader, to set him free. And that's what happened. It took a while. This had apparently been in the works for quite some time. Quite some time. And it finally came home, finally came through, and it's done now. Now, the mainstream media has been focused on this for the last uh, 48 hours, as they should be. The news cycle is very short. How long will we continue down this path? Well, there's going to be some analysis of it, see exactly what we gave up and what we got. Well, we got Americans home, and you can't put a price on that. But there also were some moments yesterday that are worth bringing up, some moments that are worth replaying and sharing with you, some moments that you have to scratch your head and say, hold on a second. Hold on just one second. Did did Joe Biden really say that out on the tarmac last night? When it was past his bedtime? Yes. Yes, he did say that. He did say that, and we'll get to that as well. Before we got the uh, plane here, back here in America, before the plane arrived home, Joe Biden was asked about Donald Trump and hostages, and as I mentioned earlier, he did have a comment on that. (laughs) President Trump has said repeatedly that he could have gotten the hostages out without giving anything in exchange. What do you say to that? What do you say to President Trump now, former president? Why didn't he do it as president? Sir, what did you say? Thank you, guys. Well, he did get 59, 59 returned without giving anything up. One of the three was taken under Donald Trump's presidency, two out of three under Joe's. But then I want to go back to the tarmac. I I talked about how I watched this last night, and it was very emotional. I don't see how any American could not have been emotional seeing those Americans return. And you got to give Evan Gershkovich uh, props, the Wall Street Journal reporter props for being just a, I I think the technical journalistic term is a badass. I think we can use that. It's a legal term to describe what he did on their form that they sign. When they leave, there is a comment section at the bottom, and usually most of the people just sign the form and go on. Gershkovich put a request in the comment section to interview Vladimir Putin before he left as a journalist. Of course that didn't happen. But that's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good moment for that guy. 
Uh, we also had, uh, as I mentioned, Joe Biden on the tarmac before everything everything went down. Some people were asking him questions, and somebody asked Joe about stepping aside, and and he said this really curious thing, and I just want to go into this. This is something that is, well, it needs a follow-up question from the media. The mainstream media won't do it, but it should get one. I'm still all right. You're stuck with me as president for a while, kid. There's no way out, okay? You got me for at least another 190 days or so. So Joe Biden said to a person in the crowd waiting, you're stuck with me. Well, yeah, we do kind of feel that way, don't we? You're stuck with me for 100 days or at least about 90 days or so. Now, I'm looking at the uh, calendar. We're 94 days and like 14 hours away from Election Day, unless you're in the states that vote starting in September. But we're 94 days. So is Joe thinking he's done on Election Day or is he going to step aside before Election Day or does he just not know? Maybe it's then he just doesn't know. Because after everybody ran to the families, after the reunion of families was happening on the tarmac, before they flew them to San Antonio, after that happened, Joe wandered away from the group and there's no audio on this the video's out there on twitter x i posted it on twitter x this morning you you should see it uh joe wandered away from the group on the tarmac and he walked over to the plane that they just got off of and got on the plane he walked up the short steps i'm wondering if he thought it was air force one And he was going up the short steps on Air Force One, thought he maybe he was going somewhere. He disappeared onto the plane for a couple of minutes. And then when he came out, eventually, nobody really said anything about it. The news media had long cut away from this. But there is unedited, uncut footage of Joe Biden suddenly turning, walking away from the group, getting on the plane and disappearing now it could be a number of things maybe he had to go you know it was late at night he's an older man there are bathrooms on planes or maybe he just got lost again it could have been he saw the short steps and thought oh my plane is here i need to go somewhere even though there was nobody standing at the foot of the steps waiting to salute him, no Marine waiting to salute him. I just wonder if anyone will ask that question. Maybe KJP will get asked that question today at the press conference. Uh, If it happens, she's not going to give us an answer. She had some interesting answers yesterday. We have to uh, follow up on a few things today. There is unemployment news out today. We'll get to that. It's a little disturbing. It appears that there is some real danger ahead in the American economy. Some loud sirens going off, warnings about our economy. And we told you that was coming. Uh, Donald Trump was on with Maria Bartiromo. We'll play you some of the highlights from that. Uh, There is an update on the situation from the Olympics and uh, the the, uh, trans boxers that have been allowed to compete against women and the uproar justifiable uproar against allowing men to beat up women to win medals. We'll get to that and a couple other surprises. We have some crazy surprises. Again, it's a Friday, so we're pulling out the fun stuff. Uh, Oh, yeah, J.D. Vance at the border yesterday. I think he did a really good job. I think he's starting to show some of the real reasons why Donald Trump chose him as his running mate. Uh, And there may be some uh, news about Kamala's running mate. All of that, big updates, and you're welcome to join us always. 888-630-9625 is the number, 888-630-9625. It's Opelka in for Plant on The Chris Plant Show. You're listening to The Chris Plant Show.
and welcome to it, the Chris Plant Show. Mike Opelka in for Chris Plant once again and uh, trying to keep up on everything. It is like news whack-a-mole today. Stories are popping up everywhere, and maybe it's because I stayed up late watching the arrival of our Americans released from uh, Russian captivity, the hostages. We have to call them hostages, Uh, political prisoners, if you will. And the swap happened after months of negotiation, apparently. Alexei Navalny, the guy who died, was part of the negotiations, and that's uh, apparently why this was delayed. So we'll follow up on that. Details are unfolding, and the uh, three Americans were sent to San Antonio for medical evaluation, which I just wonder about. You're in Washington, D.C. We have a hospital there that's so good the presidents go there. You have Walter Reed right there. Some of the best doctors in the world are there. You have New York City not far away where the medical centers are legend. You have uh, Minnesota where you have legendary medical facilities. You have the Cleveland Clinic in the aforementioned city of Cleveland. You have great hospitals in Houston. There are myriad hospitals that are world famous. We sent them to San Antonio. Is it because they are being debriefed militarily? Maybe. But then I also ask, don't we have serious military assets in Washington, D.C.? I know Chris Plant was assigned to work at the Pentagon for years when he was at CNN. Just throwing that out there. I'd like to know. Maybe somebody will ask that question in the press briefing today. A couple of other uh, breaking news headlines. MSNBC's viewers are now older than Fox News. You know the way the left likes to say, oh, Fox has all the old people watching. MSNBC's median age is now 70. And Fox News is 69, so neener, neener, neener. And CNN is 67. They're all about the same age, I guess. But MSNBC has all the old people watching. Be careful, Michael. You'll get there yourself. Uh, Let's grab one quick call here. One quick call before we uh, wrap up this first half hour. Curry in Georgia. Hello, Curry. You want to make a quick comment here? Yes, good morning, Michael. Thanks for having me. You know, I do not believe at all that men should participate in women's sports. I don't care who they are. They should not do it. But I was doing some investigating, and uh, I came across something called the Swire Syndrome. That's S-W-Y-E-R Syndrome, where a natural-born female can have the XY chromosomes. And I'm just wondering, is this what's happening with the female boxer? I don't think so. Uh, well, well, we'll dive into it. They'll sort it out. All I know is what the Italian boxer said. She's never been hit that hard before in her life. And so many other male boxers have stood up for her. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. But thank you, Curry. Interesting question. Opelka in for Plant on the Chris Plant Show. This is the Chris Plant Show. the Chris Plant Show. Welcome to it. Michael Pelka sitting in again for my friend Chris Plant, who returns in the middle of next week. He should be here in his spot in front of his microphone, talking to you, his loyal fans, on Wednesday. And no, I don't know if it's going to be a mailbag Wednesday. If you've been following Chris and his exploits on the cruise, maybe you have questions about the cruise. Although I learned something yesterday from Chris Plant. <laughs> He posted a uh, video from the Isle of Man standing in front of a monument to the Bee Gees. I did not know the Bee Gees were born on the Isle of Man. That was one of those surprises. And uh, just a a great, I asked my wife, I said, uh, honey, did you know the Bee Gees were born on the Isle of Man? She said, no, I thought they were Australian. And we watched the documentary too. That got past us. So Chris is having a lot of fun. And I guess so are the listeners who are with Chris and Michael, and uh, they will regale you with the tales next week. We are trying to keep up 
on all of the news that's bubbling today, not just the return of the Americans and the swap that we made where we sent uh, a whole bunch of folks and got three back. And one of the people was a killer, convicted killer, was serving a life sentence in a German prison for murdering someone in broad daylight in a park. And we sent them back. The uh, Biden-Harris, I'm sorry, the Harris-Biden administration negotiated that with the German leaders. And uh, they're going to give credit to Kamala. You watch the reports. They're going to give credit to Kamala Harris. It started yesterday during the press briefing where we were told that it was Kamala who was key to this. It was Kamala who was helping, helping to negotiate, even though Joe Biden was saying it's about his personal relationship with the German chancellor. So just keep up on that. Maybe we'll share John Kirby's comments. Uh, There was another Pentagon representative there yesterday. But we're also watching economic news. The economic news has uh, started giving a lot of people some worries and many people in the stock market and the financial world. The U.S. economy added only 114,000 jobs last month, which is far, far, far less than were expected. And the unemployment rate is now up to 4.3 percent. And you will be told that that is the, the greatest unemployment rate on the planet, that the rest of the world is jealous of our unemployment rate. Well, that's always been the case. We should be, as the economic leaders of the planet, the capitalists who show the rest of the world how it's done, we should be the envy of the rest of the world. But the reality is there are problems in the economy. Yesterday, there was a report from Intel, they make computer chips, uh, that they are going to lay off 15,000 people. They're going to eliminate 15,000 jobs. That's a big stinking number. When you pull 15,000 jobs out of a company, they expect to save $10 billion by doing that. That is a monster number. Now, the real problem with the economy, which is kind of hidden in the numbers, is who's getting jobs and who's losing jobs. Now, the construction industry got 25,000 jobs last month. The healthcare industry got 55,000 jobs, 14,000 jobs in transportation and warehousing. But the real issue is who's getting the jobs. There is a number over the last year. And this is from uh, Heritage Foundation's E.J. Antoni, who is a great economist. Over the last year, native-born Americans have lost 1.2 million jobs. Native-born Americans lost 1.2 million jobs. And foreign-born employment has increased by 1.3 million jobs. We are seeing a great swap-out of American workers. And it is not, uh, the pie is not growing for everyone. Just in the last year, 1.2 native born Americans have lost jobs and 1.3 foreign born men and women have gotten jobs. That's a huge problem. This was a big miss on the payrolls. And they also revised the previous month's Downward, downward, employment remains below six, 600,000 below its November of 23, 2023 level. This is a, a sign, as E.J. Antoni says, of significant weakness in the labor market. And add to that the fact that our, our debt is now crossed the $35 trillion mark. $35 trillion we borrowed, I think it was $62 billion last week to pay off the debt. And I will go back to this because I think this should be a big stinking deal for, for uh, Donald Trump on the campaign trail. I think this should be a huge discussion of what's happening with our debt and our deficits. We are taking 70% of every dollar that you and I send in for taxes 
just to pay the interest on that $35 trillion. 70% of the money we send to the government, they have to use to pay interest on all of this debt we have. It's not sustainable. And for Donald Trump to turn it around, it's going to take some very, very powerful action. And we have to stop spending. Uh, That's a little economics rant. But I was just looking to those numbers. They just crossed. And uh, Wall Street's going to react, no doubt. There will be another another shudder through the markets today because we saw it yesterday. There was a big dip in the markets yesterday. A pretty broad sell-off yesterday. I think it was close to 500 today. It's already down 472 points at the start. This is not a good sign. And the tech sector, which had been holding everybody up, has also been on the slide. Very disturbing. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, practicing President Kamala Harris is everywhere Joe Biden will be seen in an official act. You will see Kamala Harris there. And if you will pay attention to what's going on, when there are photo ops, they are giving Kamala the opportunity to be the only leader in the picture. Yesterday on the tarmac, we saw it. Yesterday, Kamala Harris got the opportunity to hug and and shake hands with each individual who was released back home after being political prisoners. And this will show up in campaign ads. It's politics. I know everybody's saying, Mike, you're just picking our... No, it is politics. I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand it. But uh, you just need to make sure you're clear on this. But I also want to make sure we... We tell you that Kamala Harris sees herself as the president now. Uh, She was on the tarmac yesterday. This was the first time we actually heard her go off script without a teleprompter. This was Kamala Harris yesterday, and uh, she didn't disappoint. She gave us a little bit of a word salad about this uh, historic release of Americans. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. This is, this is an incredible day. Yeah. So the uh, commander obvious once again there. And now she was coming from uh, the funeral of Sheila Jackson Lee yesterday in Houston where she was delivering part of the eulogy, one of the gaggle of Democrats that were there honoring the life of Sheila Jackson Lee. And uh, she took the opportunity to let us know that she sees herself as president of the United States. She is practicing president right now. I really believe that she is the practicing president. And that's what it should say, not vice president anymore. When we get her seal that goes up on the podium, it should say practicing president. Here's Kamala kind of letting the cat out of the bag. As a United States senator, I was proud to co-sponsor. And then as president, as vice president, it was my honor with the president, (laughs) with the president. Yeah, it was my honor as president, uh, vice uh, president. Yeah, she really does see herself in that role right now. And she probably is. After all, we saw Joe wander onto the plane yesterday, disappear for a couple of minutes. He talked about being around for 90 or so days when he still has pretty much almost six months left to keep doing the job. It's going to be interesting. And I go back to what we said earlier this week. Should Joe step aside, she becomes the 47th president and it screws up all of Trump's merchandising which I don't think they'd have a problem doing that. The Democrats would relish that opportunity. Uh, Let me grab a call here. Uh, Tommy is in Macon, Georgia. Macon's awake today. That's nice to hear. Macon, Georgia, welcome. Hello, Tommy. Well, uh, and uh, listen, it's not not the item of the jour, but uh, I wanted to remind all of America that when Kamala Harris swore in as vice president, She put a thin tablet on top of the Bible to take her oath of office. Now, that is the evil that we're up against. She put, I I barely heard you there, Tammy. She put a thin what? 
she put a thin little tablet up on top of the Bible so that she did not have to put her hand on the Bible to swear in to, as vice president. The I did not. Is readily av- the picture is available. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to look that up. I I I get what you're trying to say here, and I wonder now. She does have a pastor that is now being put into the spotlight along the lines of what was done with Jeremiah Wright when Barack Obama was running, and there were questions about uh, Jeremiah Wright, and now we're getting questions about Kamala's pastor. Uh, she doesn't seem to be somebody we see regularly in church unless she's doing it for political purposes. Let me ask you this, Tommy, uh, because Thomas Jefferson had a Koran himself. Uh, any thoughts on the uh, the former president, Thomas Jefferson, having a Koran in his possession? Well, he didn't swear in on it, though, did he? I don't believe so. I don't. I don't I'm going to have so. to look that one up, too. But but uh, okay, yeah, I. But, it, but she put that little thin tablet, very very thin. She slipped it on top of the Bible to take her oath of office as vice president. And I'm going to look that. Shows out. the evil. That's the evil that we're up against. You can you can find that very easily, Michael. And we appreciate you uh, filling in for Chris. You're Thank you so job. much. Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate you and all the great people of Georgia. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's check in and rest in Virginia. Uh, the place that scared the daylights out of me when I read the book, The Hot Zone, years ago. Mark is in Reston, Virginia. Hello, Mark. Hey, Mike. Thanks. Uh, yeah, The Hot Zone. I think I recall that with the uh, monkeys. and uh, The Reston Monkey uh, House was, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. And that was a true story. That, yep. <laughs> that, yep. that scared the tar out of me. Well, that one didn't scare the tar of me as much as the uh the snipers did, you know, when they were rolling around the DC area. But anyway, oh, yeah. thank you for uh, bringing up the most important subject to our country, and that is the debt. And Trump or anybody, even if it's Kamala, it, not that they'll do anything, but Trump, if he's elected, he they, it needs to be addressed. It is the 800-pound gorilla we've been talking about for how many decades now, and then now it's come to fruition here you are in this death spiral right where your interest rates go up and the payments on the debt are getting completely out of control and you know you got to cut back spending maybe you have to increase taxes as well somehow you need to reduce spending and you know in, increase money to the government so that they can start paying off all of that debt so any well, any candidate for the presidency who is worth a lick needs to, to understand that this is the biggest subject. This is the biggest threat to our country. Well, the the fact that we have said for decades, and you, you nailed it, we have said for decades, oh, we're just going to kick that can down the road and keep printing money. And now here we are at a point where this is truly unsustainable, that something has to give, that we have to stop wasting money and people like Rand Paul regularly put out his his book of government waste fraud and abuse and that needs to be addressed we're just not doing it and uh, I know that we take in enough money we don't have a revenue problem we have an expenditure problem and if you're going to add 12 15 how many million people to this country in the form of the illegal immigrants and provide them with services that debt is going to balloon pretty quickly, even bigger. And we he, we have never addressed the reality of the 80-plus thousand missing children who are now probably going to show up in public schools this fall. And all of those cities are going to need government help to provide for second-language teachers and provide meals for those 80,000 kids every day. And it may be more than 80,000 kids. Nobody's talking in real-world terms, Mark, and I— I appreciate you you understanding it as well. The debt is the horrible creature that everyone's afraid to talk about. But if we don't, it's going to be a real big problem. Uh, thank you for being there, Mark. Thank you, sir. Uh, I know debt, debt, debt is boring, boring, boring. But just imagine if you had to pay the interest on your credit cards with 70% of what you earn. 
All right, we got to do an Olympics update. We'll uh, check and see what's happening uh, this morning. There are some updates out of Paris. We'll see where we stand in the medals count. Any other controversies that are brewing out there? A lot of people looking at China going, how did that guy swim so fast? That's not possible. There are some good news stories as well. It's Mike Opelka in for Chris Plant on the Chris Plant Show. There's only one Chris Plant. The Chris Plant Show. It is the Chris Plant Show on a Friday. Mike Opelka in once again for my friend Chris Plant, who's on his vacation, but will return next week. I just uh, just saw some bad news out of the Olympics for America, at least in our, our hopes of getting a medal in tennis. Our two remaining Americans in the competition for medals in tennis, Taylor Fritz and Tommy Paul, just lost like 10 minutes ago. They were in the doubles. They knocked out uh, some of the uh, emotional favorites yesterday. Andy Murray and uh, his his doubles partner Dan Evans. But so we were on a path to get a medal. We were into the into the uh, semifinal round of the Olympics. We make it one more. We're guaranteed a medal. Didn't happen. Darn it. Hoping, hoping, hoping. But we watched last night. My wife and I watched together last night, and. I know that the uh, the games and the results happened hours earlier. I had successfully avoided all the news alerts on my phone. I had muted them all. So I didn't want to see what was going on with the women's gymnastics individual efforts. And uh, and then my wife walks in and goes, well, Simone Biles just won the gold medal. I went, well, thank you. I was trying to, spoiler alert, hello. Hello. It was great to see. We got silver and uh, bronze in the women's, in the women's individual gymnastics, and great to see that that gold medal again around Simone Biles' neck. And we watched it just the same, and she got nervous just the same, which I thought was absolutely adorable. But it, it's hard to stay away from the Olympic news all day because it is constantly pounding your phone. But currently, if we look at the medal counts as they are happening. As we speak, we have the most medals. We have 39 medals right now. But China has the most gold. And we've almost caught them. They have 12 gold medals. And they got a gold medal in 100-meter men's freestyle. And the Australian coach is screaming, say, it's not humanly possible. I wonder if they drug test those guys. Maybe. At least that's what the Aussies are pushing for. Oh, we'll keep you posted on this. It's Opelka in for Plant on the Chris Plant Show. (laughs) 